Hello and welcome to Fossil Arcade, I'm Graham. Today we'll be taking on demons, sorcerers and even death itself as we look at some home console versions of Gauntlet. This traditional fantasy adventure was one of the earliest games to introduce real-time multiplayer to arcades, meaning up to four people could explore dungeons side by side, assisting and competing with each other to get as far as they could through the game. This was a huge success for Atari, which of course was capitalised on by releasing multiple home versions. It was on the Lynx and the Game Boy and the Nintendo and the ZX Spectrum and the Sega Master System and the Apple II and anything else you can think of, it was there. This game tasks you and your friends with exploring an endless dungeon using four characters to choose from. Each of them has different strengths and weaknesses. The warrior is the strongest attacker but has poor magical power. The elf is fast moving but has weak attacks. The wizard has poor defenses but the strongest magical abilities. And the valkyrie is a well-rounded attacker with good magic and moderate defenses. Regardless of who you choose, your health is constantly counting down. You can replenish with food, but no matter what, your character will die. How far you get until that point is up to your team. Enemies will burn through your health in no time, and navigating a long maze only to find a dead end can be infuriating if you're close to death. On top of mixing and matching team lineups, each run through of Gauntlet is randomised. Stages don't appear in the same set order, and don't always have the same layouts, resources or enemies. You must always be on your toes to take on whatever is out there. So if you want to recreate that old school feeling at home, what are your options? Well, besides the obvious emulators, we've got three versions of the Gauntlet right here, but which provides the best at home experience? First up, we have Gauntlet by Tengen on NES. This is a reasonably faithful port given the limitations, although it doesn't bear all the Gauntlet trademarks, it's only two player, released three years before the NES would gain a four player adapter. As it's a 10 gen cartridge, you'll notice it doesn't have Nintendo's official seal of approval. Atari released these in an attempt to undermine Nintendo, which failed for legal reasons. As such, Atari was sued for producing unlicensed cartridges such as this, and Gauntlet later received a re-release. That brings us quickly to Gauntlet 2. This version has some major differences to the Tengen version. Most notably, there's no music at all despite Tengen having a full soundtrack. Instead, Gauntlet 2 recreates the classic Gauntlet Master voice from the arcade, which was missing before. This really adds a sense of urgency as the master lets you know how serious your condition is or whether or not other players have made mistakes. 2 also features the enemy creature It, which if touched will cause you to become the target of all enemies. The role of It can be passed from one player to another. One big difference is the addition of four players, which is possible thanks to the NES 4 score released in 1990. When you get four people around the TV for this, you get some really hectic fun. Control-wise, 2 is not as smooth as Tengen. Maneuvering your character can be painful at times, as it feels impossible to fit through small gaps or navigate infuriating portals. The lack of music is also a real downside, but nothing a good record can't fix. Moving forward to 1993, we have Gauntlet 4 on the Sega Mega Drive. What about Gauntlet 3 I hear you say? Well, number 3 wasn't actually an arcade port, so I might talk about that another time. This is more of a version 4 than a sequel, as it brings the home experience as close as possible to the arcade. Still 4 player, thanks to the multi-tap adapter, and with a full soundtrack, this is a much more robust package. Ugh. Out of the three versions we have here, the Mega Drive is obviously the best one. There are very few differences between this and the genuine arcade game. Gauntlet 4 even has a handful of extra modes to beef up the title's replayability. In addition to a near-perfect port of the arcade mode, there's a competitive battle mode, a quest mode with some RPG elements, and record mode which is basically like a practice area. I would like to give Gauntlet a big recommendation, but there's also a big price tag attached to having all of this stuff. 
The game will only cost you about 10 to 30 pounds, which is okay, and presumably you already have the system of your choice, but the multi-tap will cost you a bit more depending on the system, and although you can find a big box of dusty, dirty controls at a marketplace, they're not likely to be good quality. Quality handsets will cost you a bit more. Overall, you're looking at spending about 80 pounds to have the full player experience. My advice would be to look at other full player games available for the system of your choice and make sure you're making the most of your purchases. The reason I suggest getting all of this extra stuff is because I don't personally feel Gauntlet makes a good single player game. You just don't get the same feeling of risk and excitement playing alone as when you do when you're playing with a group. And more so than that, there are better single player games out there. But when my friends and I get together and we play around this, we always have a great time and really enjoy ourselves. The difficulty can be a bit gruelling, but it is a gauntlet after all, so what do you expect? I hope you enjoyed this quick look back at a few versions of Gauntlet. If you have any thoughts or questions on these, please let me know. And if you want to know more about that 10 game scandal I mentioned, check out a video by the Gaming Historian. It's very informative. Other than that, I'll see you next time.